Sapphire? Sapphire Nitro Plus Motherboard? AM5? Yeah, we're gonna take a look. Also want to put out, it has three full-size expansion slots. Nitro Plus B850A Wi-Fi 7 from Sapphire. Ooh, look at that, a nice premium Wi-Fi 7 antenna with normal connectors. So for a PCIe slot layout, it's a little unusual. It's a Gen 5 slot. The other two slots, they're X16 physical, but electrically PCIe 4.0 by four, and the bottom slot is PCIe 4.0 by two, two lanes. We have an RS-232 serial port header, front panel audio, addressable RGB, a four pin fan header at the bottom edge, four pin speaker, TPM header, front panel header, the old style 5050 analog RGB header, and a single USB 2.0 header. There's another four pin fan header at the bottom front edge of the motherboard, four six gigabit per second SATA ports, a USB type C, 20 pin, five gigabit USB, two more four pin headers at the top, one at the very top of the edge, makes three. We got two eight pin power connectors. For the rear IO, we have a full size display port connector and HDMI, a BIOS update port, which you can hit the button and flash to get an updated CPU, which is nice, USB 3.2 Gen 2, a type C port, you have four USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, your RJ45 port, Wi-Fi 7, and then you've got six analog audio. They have added the full 7.1 option with another one. I would take 7.1 with optical, but this is, if you have analog audio, a key differentiator for Sapphire. Now in terms of our M.2 layout, there are three M.2 and they are located entirely underneath your GPU. Maybe not amazing for cooling, but this is a very large heat sink setup that they have and any normal, reasonable, even a Gen 5 uh, NVMe located in this way with this type of heat sink that's gonna try to pull air toward the front here should be sufficient for cooling. We'll test that. And that's it. Uh, if, you know, for the motherboard accessory bundle, you get two SATA cables and your Wi-Fi antenna and the manual. And that's it. There's nothing else. It's a minimalism that I like. Now our NIC is based on the Realtek 8125BG. It's a two and a half gigabit LAN controller. Sapphire says the DDR5 support is up to 8,000 plus mega transfers. Actually it says megahertz on the back of the box, which would be 16, Thousand mega transfers? I'm pretty sure that's a typo. Cause later it does say 8,000 mega transfers down here. Just not up there, down here. Yeah, anyway, so let's put it on a bench. Always be sure to save your CPU socket protector. Cause if you need to mail it in for warranty or anything like that, you need that. It's very easy to damage the socket if you get foreign material in there. Dust, debris, hair, accidentally mashing it with your thumb can cause catastrophic problems. Now Sapphire says that they support up to 192 gigabytes of memory. We're gonna try 256 with our crucial 5600, 256 gig kit. If this works, we'll try the Trident Z5 Neo RGB AMD Expo kit. I've tested this kit of memory with other motherboards and it will work at DDR5 6000 with all four DIMMs on certain motherboards. If you also win the CPU silicon lottery, cause that is an overclock, but surprisingly capable on certain motherboards. Oh, we got postcode readout LEDs on the front edge, which will help us diagnose if it won't post with 256 gigs of memory. That's nice. Sapphire's made some unique design decisions. You've got four Phillips screws to get at the toolless quick release M.2 holders. And then you have the thickest thermal pad that I've ever seen in my entire life. This is meant to carry heat from the underside of the M.2 to the motherboard. So clearly Sapphire is trying to give you options for cooling your M.2. A thermal pad that's that thick is not very effective, but it is very effective compared to no thermal pad at all if this heat sink is heat soaking. All right, real quickly for our BIOS walkthrough, I love that they've got some quick set buttons for you to just turn on PBO or XMP or resize bar. Resize bar is on by default. XMP is not on by default, which makes sense. Under advanced, you do have a lot of the common options, IOMMU, precision boost overdrive, smart access memory, resize bar, C states, SVM mode. Under devices, you can enable the RS-232 serial port, Bluetooth, wireless LAN, the integrated graphics controller and whether or not you want the primary display to be integrated or not. You can do PCIe bifurcation, including X8, X4, X4, which is nice. 
You can also set the max link speed for Gen 5, PCIe X4 max link speed, whether or not you want the LAN controller to be enabled. Good stuff there. Under storage, you've got your SATA configuration. Interestingly, they don't list NVMe under storage. This is just for SATA. Power, you have some options. You can set if you want to do power loss or USB. And Sapphire's put a lot of work into customizing the menus here. They have left, left the secure memory encryption uh, option enabled, which is nice, in the NX mode. You can also set a BIOS password. Some options are under overclocking, a CPU and PBO, precision boost overdrive. You can toggle advanced on and set some options there. Memory options. You can set some of the advanced properties for DRAM, but not all of them for advanced memory training. At least not from this screen. Ah, memory timing, here we go. This lines up really nicely with Zen timings. So this is nice to see. Between this tab and this tab, you've got basically everything you need to really dial in memory. And you've got a shot at getting your 256 gig kit working above DDR5 3600, setting some manual options here. You also have options for manual voltage control. The status screen is nice, and this is one of the most well-organized that I've seen in a BIOS for checking what your sensors are and your fan status and voltage inputs to the motherboard and voltages that are going to the CPU and BIOS updates down there at the bottom. One thing I think Sapphire should expose is the AMD CBS and PBS menu. Those are nice. Those have a lot of options. This is not full parity with all of the options AMD gives you in the CBS and PBS menu. That should be accessible here somewhere, somehow. Maybe I just missed it, but I didn't see it. All right, exciting times. Now, even though Epic is not on the QVL list, Epic on AM5 does work here. I'm sorry to report the error correcting memory ECC UDIMs on this platform didn't seem to work either. It's a pretty good board for Linux. Linux has pretty good support for the layout. Um, you might have to reprogram the uh, audio output labeling, but the audio codec, the chip itself, is well supported. It's just that the audio out layout on this is a little unusual, so depending on your distro, you might have to you know, relabel some of the outputs in order to get it to work. But by and large, Linux was a pretty good experience on this. I like what Sapphire's done with the, the BIOS. And overall, the board runs pretty cool. The VRM cooling solution might be a little overkill. Some parts of it are a little bit more aesthetic than functional. But even with an overclock on our 9950X, it does work pretty well. Now, Epic, of course, is locked down. If you ran you know, 128 gigs or 256 gigs, it's going to run at a, a standard speed like 3600 is what you're going to get for a 256 gig kit because that is what is officially supported when you're running two dims per channel with this density but uh yeah other than that there's really not a lot to uh complain about it's nice to see this from sapphire this is appropriate a b850 motherboard i'm glad they didn't go over the top with something like x870e i would have liked to have had two pcie gen 5 nvme slots don't know what, <laughs> there might be restrictions on what chipset you can use for that particular configuration. More USB 5 and 10 gigabit at the rear might also be okay, but then Sapphire is targeting a pretty strong value proposition. So having four USB 2 ports at the back plus the other USB configuration at the rear IO, I get it. I kind of get it. So we'll leave this machine on the test bench, running some burn-in tests and some other experiments, you know, here in the lab and see how that goes over the longer haul. But so far, I like what I see. Nice job, Sapphire, and the Nitro Plus B850A Wi-Fi 7. I kind of like Sapphire getting into motherboards. It could be pretty interesting. I'm one of this level one. If you have any questions, if I missed anything, or you want to see me do a particular test with this, hit me up in the forum. I'm signing up. I'll see you there.